Neil C. I'm Neil C. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Didn't think I'd be back so quick. <laughs> so, I've been tasked with speaking to you about the foundation of what's happening, and I think it, it actually does fit really well with what I ended with last night. God is doing a new work. It's global, which is unusual. It's not happening in history like this, where all over the world he's speaking at once to young people, giving them a hunger and a thirst for righteousness that they can't find in traditional ways. And they're coming to Christ. So it's important that this new work be done right. So what I'm going to speak on today is the foundation for the church, the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone. But before we go further with that, we need to actually get to the... Uh, do a little bit of summary about the, the, the gifts that are talked about for the church in Ephesians 4. We won't spend a lot of time here. If you want more information, the book Primal Fire is where you need to turn to. Um, but he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, for the building up of the body of Christ so that we all attain to the unity of the faith, which is the... It, this is the Magna Carta Ephesians is the Magna Carta of the church. It was written by Paul to all churches everywhere. You notice he never mentions any person or the church that meets in their home or this person, to, these two people to get along. He doesn't do any of that because this letter was meant to be circulated. It was written for you to pass on to the next church, the next church, the next church. And in it, he lays the foundation of what church truly is. And he elevates our understanding of ecclesia, church, to its highest place. That's Ephesians. And in the middle of Ephesians, he tells us that he gave us gifts to equip all of us to serve him. And there are five of them. And each of them, when they are functioning at their height, they affect the people around them with a different kind of spirit. Each of these gifts can. So I'm going to just go through all five to show you how this works, and it won't be very long. We start with the A, the apostle, and they can be summed up with contagious, contagious empowerment. What the apostle does is they start the fire. They empower people to carry it to the next and the next and the next. And so when an apostle is apostolizing, which is a word I just made up to sound smart, did it work? <laughs> yeah. When an apostle is doing their work, the people around them all say as one, I can do this. They feel empowered. You can't fake this. You can talk about empowerment, you can teach about it, you can write books about it, but the truth is, they either are feeling the power or they're not, and that's not up to you, that's the Spirit of God. But it comes off the apostolic gift. Secondly is the prophet. When the prophet is at work, they, I, this is contagious sight. They have hindsight of what happened in the past, insight to what's happening now, and foresight into what's coming. That's the apostle. I mean, sorry, the prophet. And when they are doing their work, when the prophet is profiting, actually, they don't profit much. They're usually <laughs> non-profits. <laughs> but that's okay. They don't have to pay rent for the cave they live in and out in the wilderness. But when they're doing their work, the people around them all say as one, I can hear God's voice. They begin to hear. The evangelist is contagious compassion. They are the conscience for the church of, of the people who need Christ out there in the world who are suffering, the least, the last, the lost. And, and when the evangelist is at work, the people around him or her will say, I love others. The compassion for the world is elevated through the evangelist. The shepherd is contagious unity. And when the shepherd is functioning, the people around them realize everyone's important. Every single person. That's important. And so then as the teacher, contagious learning. We need to constantly be growing. You know, you don't finish your education. Education is a lifelong experience. And if you're not still learning, there's something wrong. You're in detention. It's time to get out and start learning it. And so when the teacher is at work, people hunger for more. Hunger for more truth. So there, these are the A pests. They are the primal fire that spreads from one person to the next. They provide light, they provide heat, they, they purify, they heal, all of these things together. And they all represent Jesus. 
If I asked you who was the greatest apostle in the New Testament, many would say Paul, some would say Peter if you're more Catholic. Both Peter and Paul would say it's Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, and teacher. Raise your hand if you have Jesus. All right, so now you have all five gifts inside of you. You can no longer use the excuse, oh, I'm not gifted in that. You, to be more like Christ is to grow in all five of these categories. Now, none of you are going to be all five equippers. You don't live a long enough life to do that. But you can become stronger in one or two gifts. But here we have the A and the P of the start and go team. And the EST are the stay and grow team. We need both. So there's a foundation that is to be laid. The start and go team. You know, I, here's, here's something I can tell you. So if we run out of time, you've been trained. Ready? <laughs> you can summarize everything I've ever taught and every book I've ever written in one simple sentence. And you're probably thinking he should have started with that last night. <laughs> Listen to Jesus and do what he says. What would happen in the world if we all just did that? If we all just listened to Jesus and did what he says, I think the world would change in just a few years if we just did that. And you know what? That's the foundation for the church. And God gave us an app for that, AP, the apostle and prophet. Listen to Jesus, do what he says. It's not enough to know what he says. Information is not why Jesus bled on the cross. He came for more than just your head knowledge. He wants your life, your will, your heart. So theology, in one respect, isn't really theology if it doesn't make its way to your shoe leather and change the way you act, the way you talk, the way you walk. So you can tell that the church has been functioning on a faulty foundation because it's okay in church for you just to know stuff. And in fact, you can get promoted in church just based on your knowledge or your ability to teach information, pass it on. That's not enough. So what we're missing all along is that I can do this. That ability to actually work it all out, to physically act like Jesus. It's not enough to know Jesus in just your knowledge. You have to know him with your whole being. And that's, we're like that because we've been built on a faulty foundation. The EST is the establishment of the church on that foundation. You think you know what a shepherd is. You think you know what an evangelist is. But you don't know what a shepherd or evangelist or a teacher is like that are built on the foundation of listening to Jesus and doing what he says. If the church is like this... Those roles change. And suddenly the teacher isn't teaching the saints. They're training the saints how to teach. And the whole movement is spreading. Hmm. All right? That's just a quick summary. Don't be afraid of, by what you're about to see. <laughs> Anybody running for the door yet? Before Satan stole this symbol, it was a Christian symbol. And if you take all five gifts and connect them all to each other, this is what you get. We also had the rainbow originally. <laughs> that was given to us. So don't let this scare you. But if every gift is connected to every gift, there are, um, whoops, I went too fast. There would be five gifts. There'd be 26 different connections. If you take one of those gifts out, it drops to four gifts and it cuts in half the number of combinations of what's possible to 11. If you take another gift out, then you only have three connections and there's only four combinations possible. If you take another gift out, then you've got two gifts, one combination, that's it. Welcome to church for the last 200 years, right? <laughs> You take one of those out, and you're left with zero, get one gift, zero combinations. We need to have as much of Jesus as possible and not be content with less than the full 
Jesus. Amen. So don't be afraid of this design. What we need is for the whole body of Christ to come together. Speaking the truth in love, we are to bring together what every joint supplies into the building up of the body of Christ. Every single gift is important. I believe this to be what Paul writes about in Ephesians chapter 3, the manifold, the many-sided wisdom of God. And we have been limited to a very small-sized wisdom of God in church because we've limited in the number of people. And so what I want you to do now is to swear yourself to the purposes of all five gifts. You no longer, if you're a shepherd, you can't say, I'm not worried about the people out there. I'm too concerned with the people in here. Well, if you're like Christ, you're worried about both. And if you're an evangelist, you have to be concerned with the people who are in as well as out. We need to be sworn to the purpose of Christ. And he is found in all five of these gifts. So you'll have a main gift, a primary gift, and a secondary gift, tertiary gift, fourth, fifth. You have all of them inside of you. This is the way you are. You won't live long enough to have a dominance in all five, but you might find one or two where you are strong enough. Paul says, I'm an apostle, I'm a herald or a preacher or evangelist, and I'm a teacher. He was all three. You can grow in these things. Here's the goal. You want to grow in all of them to be like Christ. So we start with Jesus. We talked about this yesterday, right? It all begins with that one seed of Jesus. He contains it all. You have Jesus. You have everything. From Jesus, there's this DNA that emerges. Divine truth, nurturing relationship, apostolic mission. That is who Jesus is in a nutshell. It's all, but he's more than that, but that's the whole thing. You find it all in Jesus. And then you have these apex gifts that, that come out. And you might find we have expressions of all five things going on. Most churches don't. And that's how we have the body of Christ emerging. It won't look like a local church that you're used to. It will be a movement. It will be decentralized. It will be spreading. It will be life on life. It will be from disciple to disciple, house to house, city to city, nation to nation. That's how it works. It won't be, I like to say this, it won't be an organization, it'll be a murmuration. A murmuration is when you see a flock of birds all moving as one, as though they're all hearing from one voice. That's how we will be in the future. Now this is a building in San Francisco. Went too fast, sorry. Sorry about that. Nope. Well, I showed you a picture of a building in San Francisco called the Millennial Tower. It's a big, huge, beautiful skyscraper. There's only one problem. It's sinking. It's tilting. And they're trying desperately to build a foundation under it. After it's built. You don't do that. That's not how it works. And I don't know if you know this, but in California, every now and then, we have an earthquake. San Francisco had one in, what, 1989? During the World Series? If an earthquake hits, this thing, that building's coming down. But the good news is, this is a very expensive housing market, but you can get a condo for pretty cheap. <laughs> if you're willing to live in the Millennial Tower. You need to have a sound foundation. The church needs a sound foundation. Paul writes, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's family, God's household, having been built on the foundation of the evangelist and the teacher. It doesn't say that. Why? Have any of you ever known a really effective evangelist? The one on our team, man, you could sit at lunch, the waiter will come and take your order. Before dessert, the waiters come to Christ. <laughs> and when I see this, my first reaction is, I could do this. My first reaction is, man, I wish I had that gift. That's what happens when you see an effective evangelist. You see an effective teacher and you think, man, I wish I could do that, but I can't. Uh, that's an exceptional talent. But when you see an apostle, for some reason, everyone says, I can do this. I think it's because we can do a lot of things, but we're a master of absolutely nothing. 
We're, we're not setting the bar too high. But we are getting things started, getting people empowered. That's the foundation we need to start with, the apostles and the prophets. And Christ Jesus himself is the chief cornerstone that is laid that everything is built upon. So let's talk about this for a minute. Let's take a moment. I want you to realize what's at stake here. So take a look around the room. Look at the faces of everybody. Look at the chairs, look at the walls, look at the ceiling, the floor. See everything. I want you to know that everything you see is only half of what is real. There is a spiritual dimension that you are in the midst of that is at war with everything you want that's good in life. And the enemy of this world wants to kill, steal, and destroy all that is good. That's what, our, that's what we're fighting with. And he has not sent us into this battle unarmed. He's given us weapons. But all of it begins with a foundation that is laid, that is the apostles and the prophets. Now, I believe Satan has worked overtime for 2,000 years to steal from the church two specific gifts, the apostles and the prophets. Why? Because if you start wrong, you'll end wrong. If you don't know where you begin, then you will never know where to finish. We must start correctly. And that's with the apostles and prophets. And we've all seen what church is like built on the evangelist foundation or built on the teacher foundation. What we need to see now is a new work of God that's built on a completely different foundation that empowers everyone to hear God's voice and obey what he says. And I don't want anything less than that. So let's talk about these gifts. We are in a situation where the God of this age has blinded the minds of those who are unbelievers. Do you believe this? Have you experienced it? Is it not true? If you want to make a difference, we have to get through that veil and open their eyes and they will respond to Jesus. But for some reason, we think if we have a sexy saxophone on the stage, more people will come to Christ. We tend to think if I preach a sermon that has more stories and jokes and people laugh and cry, they'll be more spiritual. We think that if we have a program for evangelism like Alpha or whatever you choose, that more people will come to Christ. That's idolatry. Alpha never saved a soul. Every soul that Alpha saved is going to hell. It's only Jesus that saves people. Now, Alpha will tell you this. Nikki will tell you that. That's true. But Jesus is our only Savior. We cannot put our confidence in something else and expect to get fruit. It has to come back to Jesus. And he is the one who can open the minds of unbelievers. Not a better strategy. You were dead in your trespasses and sins which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air who is now at work in the sons of disobedience. This is what's happening right now. We must be prepared for this. But the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, that's now, some will fall away from the faith paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. You know there are doctrines of demons going on right now. There are lies being put forth that are just insane. But you know what's even more insane is that people are believing them and passing them on to others. We're in a world that wants to, to do everything without God. Mm. That's a doctrine of demon. Mm. And we have weapons to fight against this if we only turn to those weapons and let them loose. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world, say that with me, whole world is under the control of the evil one. The great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who was called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. That's who we're fighting. This is where we need to do our fight. And we need to have weapons that can pierce through their defenses. 
带领着愧对。There we go. Because our struggle is not with people, but with rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world against the spiritual forces in the heavenly places. That's who we're fighting with, right? You all got this. You knew this. You knew these verses ahead of time. I don't know why I spent time on that. Here's a story from the New Testament. Jesus is tempted, <laughs> tempted by the devil, right? He's, he's taken up to a mountaintop, and there he showed him all the kingdoms of the world in one moment of time. And he says to him, I will give you all this domain and its glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you worship before me, it shall be yours. Jesus answered and said, is it, is it not written? that you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Two observations I want to make. One, this is a transaction. All temptations are transactional. They are a negotiation. It's business. Mm -hmm. You're giving something to get something. And Satan will put the shiny bobble in front of you and say, you can have this quicker and easier with me. All it will cost you is this. The other thing I want you to see I want you to ask the question, who gave rulership of the world over to Satan? Was it God? No. God gave it to us, and we have given it to him. We have chosen in this negotiation to sacrifice our authority, give it to him in exchange for sex, drugs, rock and roll, whatever it is, fame, glory, power. That's what's happened. And that's how he has had rulership over this whole world. Well, I'm here to tell you that God has given us the weapons to shut this down, to take it back. It's the apostolic gift that has the authority to shut down the enemy's work. Jesus said, I'm sending out like sheep in the midst of wolves. That's a kind of a weird verse, isn't it? I mean, we all know it, we're familiar with it. Every now and then we quote it because we see trouble coming. But will you, will you ever really think about it? Why does the great shepherd send his sheep to the wolves? That doesn't sound like a great shepherd to me. Well, we don't want to get too close to heresy, so I'm not going to bring that up. <laughs> There's a reason why he's sending us to the wolves. Wolves find lost sheep easier than we do. The reason he's sending us to the wolves is that's where the lost sheep are. Jesus is sending us right into the battlefield against the forces of darkness. This is an apostolic passage. That's what the apostolic gift, the sent one, is supposed to do. Go right to the edge of darkness and shut down the enemy's work. That's what we have not been doing. That is what the apostle that gift is given for you. Want to jump forward. It's all really good stuff, but want to get all right. So let's just do it the old fashioned way and use the Bible. <laughs> Paul had to defend his apostolic authority because it was being challenged by false apostles. So he wrote a letter called 2 Corinthians. Chapter 10 to the end, chapter 13, is all about him defending his apostolic authority. He says, it's foolish of me to do this, but here's, here we go. This is what I've done. It begins with him saying, the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses raised up against the knowledge of God. Now the hour, the we in that verse, are the apostles. They are given these weapons to tear down those strongholds risen up against the knowledge of God. This is why Satan has gone after that gift so hard and stolen it from us because it takes away all our weapons. This is a unique gift given you get, the best way to understand the apostle is think of the first one. Imagine being the first apostle. You are sent into the darkest stronghold, a city just dominated and oppressed by evil for centuries and millennia. And you're going in there with the gospel with one other person. 
and leaving it changed. God has given that gift the powers to shut down the enemy, to tear down his strongholds, to shut his gates of hell. And also, he says, about this authority, he also gave us the authority for building you up and not destroying you. So what we need are these two gifts, apostles and prophets. The, prof the prophet is the navigator, because they see these things. They see them, they see what's really happening. They know where to go. They know where the strongholds are. They know what they're about, what the spirits are. But we've left all spiritual warfare to the prophets who can see it, but they don't have the weapons. So they end up praying, which is a good thing, and it does cause change. And they end up doing prophetic acts, symbols to the enemy to say, we see you, we know what you're doing. But what they don't do is shut down the work. What we need is that the apostles and the prophets come together, work together, find these strongholds, tear them down. Now, we're dealing with immortal beings. You can't kill them. You can't lock them up in prison. What can you do? You can shut their access, take away their authority, and make them start all over again. And what does that do? It slows down the work of the enemy so that we can speed up the work of the church. This is what's needed now. This is what's needed yesterday, but right now we need this. We need an apostolic prophetic foundation that slows down the work of the enemy and speeds up the work of the church. So we're praying, and I'll pray right now. Lord, Father, raise up apostles and prophets, young apostles, apostolic warriors, and prophetic partners so they can receive Amen. prophetic intelligence and be led there Amen. to apostolically with authority shut down Amen. the work of the enemy and give space Amen. and oxygen to the room so the church can fill that place with your glory, with your power. Amen. Lord, do this now in our lifetime. Let us see what you could truly do all by yourself with your great power and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Neil. I know Neil could have gone on for a lot longer, and I appreciate him kind of condensing that down for us this morning with our change, so thank you for being flexible.